Scott Stay CERN with Heinz, an expert in concurrency and parallel programming. So we're at CERN in the home of the Large Hadron Collider, and yeah. one event causes two megabytes of data. Yeah. But they're dealing with billions of events, so that should be easy for you, right? <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm completely intimidated by this place. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, yesterday we went on this tour of CMS. I always thought that it stands for concurrent mark sweep, but it's yeah. something else. I don't, can't remember what it is. It's something muon or something collider. And um, just seeing the, the stuff they do here, um, I'm completely intimidated by this place. Um, uh, you know, they invented the internet. So how do you get up and talk about, you know, Java threading or manage block after that one? <laughs> you know, there's just, you, you can't get back from that. Um, well, fork join is pretty complicated. No, not compared to inventing the internet. Maybe not. Or <laughs> inventing the trackball or inventing the touchscreen or inventing, it just carries on and on, you know. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really, not, the stuff I do is really very simple in comparison to what they do here. It's uh, it's it's supposed to be simple. It's supposed to be easy to understand. Fork join is just basically, I've got a job to do, break up the job into two, and do it with two threads. So I might be a master thread, Ooh, and okay. yeah, <laughs> and delegate one job to you, another thread, yeah. and another thread. We don't have a third person. And when you have finished, you come back together and give me the information. Is that right? No, not really, because the master thread is not. Uh, uh, is not going to sit idle and waiting for stuff to happen. The master is going to pull up his sleeves and also help. That's like the, the difference. Is that the work stealing algorithm part of? Sort of, yeah, sort of. It's that's where the work, the work stealing is related to that. Um, basically, what happens is that the master thread would say, "I've got too much work to do. Let me fork off. Let me, let me divide the work in half. I'll do half and give the other half to maybe someone else to do." Yeah. So the other thread would then pick that up and say, well, it's still too much for me. Or the master might still say the work is still too much, even half is still too much to do. I'll break it up again. And we keep on breaking it up. It's called recursive decomposition. And this is where the work stealing comes in, that you you sometimes uh, have have, um, ha have threads where the queues are too long and threads which are idle. So the threads in steel work off other threads, queues. Um, it's a bit like when you go to supermarket checkout and a new a new, um, a new teller opens up, and they steal they steal work off other queues, so that they've got something to do, not sitting idle. So you make sure you're using like the full computational right, right. power available. No, one exactly. No one problem is that you can have is that you uh, is that some of the threads might block. They shouldn't block, but if they do, then um, you you'd have less threads actually doing work that are sitting there, you know, waiting for stuff to happen. And um, it's a bit like when you go to the checkout counter and the person in front of you didn't ring up, the, didn't weigh their vegetables, right? And so then now they, they, they block the line and they say, what? Um, we're going to block the line. And in the meantime, they, somebody, somebody runs off to weigh the vegetables. And you're standing behind there going like, <laughs> why didn't they weigh their vegetables? You know, stupid. So you have to wait for them to. So the, the, the teller is blocked, right? So what the managed blocker would say is would say, right, that's fine. Leave that queue. The the person who who who's who had had to wait because of the vegetables now goes to another till and opens that up and says, right, just come here. So the others go there and keep on working. So you have more throughput. Okay, so the managed blocker, when it notices a block, moves the bottleneck to somewhere else so that yes, the queue can something continue. Something like that. The, the fork join pool itself does it. So the fork join pool internally, when it sees that that a thread is blocked with a managed blocker, then it, it goes and it, it, it might start another thread to pick up the slack so you get the parallelism the same throughout.